All right, first of all, let me say, wow, we launched Chainstripper on the first of this month, and here we are eight days later, and you have completely sold us out and caused a great logistical panic as we were trying to get all of the ingredients to make more. Um, so on the one hand, thank you. On the other hand, we are working as fast as we can uh, to get this product back in stock for you. But in the meantime, we have had a lot of questions uh, on this YouTube channel as well as in our customer service inbox, on Instagram, on Facebook, on Twitter, and pretty much everywhere else that uh, you guys can reach us, which is almost everywhere. So uh, we thought we would just do a simple video FAQ uh, to answer some of the most common questions that we have uh, regarding the chain stripper product. Question one, does this work with chain rings, cassettes, and pulley wheels? And my answer is, Technically, yes, but uh, if we're being honest, this stuff is not cheap, and it is like mega high horsepower cleaning. Um, it is probably not the most cost-effective way to clean those things. I would recommend something like a Silka gear wipe, a Silka degreaser, or if you're using the Silka brake and drivetrain cleaner, um, that's going to do about as good a job on those components as the chain stripper would do. It's going to do it at a fraction of the price. Uh, the, the real power of the stripper is its ability to climb into the chain, encapsulate and lift all that grease, and then bring it out. Uh, and when you're looking at just external surfaces like a chain ring or a cog, um, you're really just needing to lift it off the surface and let it drip away. It's a much simpler process. So if you want, go for it, um, but you can probably save yourself some money by doing it the old school way. Question two, can it be used in an ultrasonic cleaner? And if so, do you dilute it and do you heat it? Uh, we've tried it in an ultrasonic cleaner. It works great. Uh, one of the real advantages here, like I said, this is some seriously high horsepower stuff. It really takes away um, the advantage or the benefit of the ultrasonic cleaner. So shaking it in the ball jar or an old water bottle uh, really becomes 100% as effective as the ultrasonic. So my recommendation, if you have an ultrasonic cleaner, would be to convert the ultrasonic cleaner over to a hot wax uh, melting machine because ultrasonic waxing is without a doubt the most efficient and effective way to wax the chain. Um, so do you heat it? Uh, I would heat it, but not much. It is miscible in water. There is water content in here. You don't want it all evaporating out in a way um, I wouldn't heat it much more than, you know, maybe 100 to 120 Fahrenheit um, if you're going to heat it in your ultrasonic cleaner. But again, there's really no added benefit. It's a 10-minute process at room temperature, even without ultrasonic. So, you know, there's, you're not really doing anything to speed it up or improve its function uh, if you were doing it that way. And then the other question is, do you dilute it? And again, I would not dilute it. Um, just because it's so effective as it is, and you are getting, again, one full chain per ounce. So if you put the whole 16 ounces in your cleaner, you will be able to get 16 entire chains um, cleaned and then start the process over. Uh, th there's not a, really any advantage to diluting it, and you're not going to make it go any further because chemically it's sort of a one-to-one, -one, right? It's so much chemical is grabbing and encapsulating so much grease, and essentially it's getting used up in that process. Uh, so we would not recommend diluting. Can you use this to reset or strip a used or older chain? Absolutely. Um, it's hard for us to know. Like I said, all of our calculations have been done with new chains from the different brands, and so our one ounce uh, per chain is sort of a one-to-one -one in terms of how much chemical can absorb how much grease from the chain. Your used chain probably has grease and dirt and all sorts of other stuff in it. Um, so you probably lose that one-to-one -one ratio. It's just hard to say. Um, again, I think there are cheaper ways for you to degrease uh, used chains, because oftentimes the, uh, in use you've been adding wet lube or a dry lube that has a solvent, um, and that's actually been helping flush out the factory grease. And so the, the strength of this product is really attacking that heavy, thick, viscous uh, factory grease. But yes, it absolutely will work on that. Uh, my one caveat is, you know, we do not recommend uh, stripping to zero and going to wax on used chains unless they're very mildly used. And one of the reasons there is that the, the wear of chain is nonlinear. And uh, once you break through the chrome surface or the PVD surface or the uh, TIN surface, whatever the coating of the chain is, 
the chain wear really rapidly accelerates. And so if you've got a chain that's been used to the point that you've got breakdown of whatever uh, coating is on that metal, you may actually find that you know moving to wax will help slow the wear, but it's it, it's not going to help it nearly in the way that you want it to or that you would think. So, you know, I would say for a chain fewer than maybe a few hundred miles, go for it. Otherwise, for the, you know, whatever, 30 to to $100, I would just start with a new chain. Can I use it to strip my waxed chain? And the answer there is no, um, because it actually we have removed or, or not used any chemicals that are harmful to wax. And in fact, we are using chemicals in here that promote the adhesion of wax to the metal surface. So uh, the best way to strip your waxed drivetrain is with boiling water, um, which you know is very free or very cheap, depending on where you are. Um, very easy and very environmentally friendly. So uh, this is really a beginning of your waxing journey sort of product. Once you're on wax, uh, if you're drip waxing, I boil water in a, a kettle with a little spout and pour it on the front of the half of the chain ring as I pedal the chain through um, and, and let it drip down onto like a paper towel or something. Or if you're hot melt waxing, uh, you know, throw it in a pot of boiling water for five minutes, take it, shake it off, drop it in your hot wax, the excess water will boil away um, and you're done. You are now able to reset, as we say, the chain to zero with just water. Um, so no need to use it, but it will not uh, attack wax. So uh, you can try it, but it will frustrate you. Can you use it to uh, convert your chain to another oil-based lube like Silka's Synergetic, which continues to be the number one oil-based lube at the zero friction testing? And the answer there is yes. Um, it absolutely can be used to strip to zero. For that, the wax promoting or adhesion promoting um, bit in there is like micro scale and does not prevent the wetting of the metal um, uh, by the oil-based lubricant. I mean, the way to think of it is it's, it's almost like it's leaving behind sort of a, um, think of like a, a liquid wax that you might put on like an automobile paint or something. So it's just a, a very microscopic layer of wax friendly particles, um, but those will be wet out completely. Um, uh, by the oil and you actually may even have some residual chain protecting benefits of the little wax residue uh, that is left behind by the stripper. So, uh, yep, if you want to convert to Synergetic or another uh, high-end wet lube, this will work great to get the factory grease out for that. The next question, how environmentally friendly is it and what do I do with it after I use it? And so one of the things that uh, we call out with this product, we've got our little green leaf, it is a biodegradable product. That means that the, the surfactants and the, the solvents in there are made from uh, natural materials, uh, but that doesn't mean that they aren't super strong. And so it is incredibly concentrated stuff. It is considered uh, generally safe for release to the environment after it's been mixed uh, to a low enough percentage with enough water. But of course, we don't know what you're stripping out of your chain, especially if it's a used chain. I've got my little ball jar here. You can kind of see if I swirl it around the stuff that floats up in there. That's what comes out of the chain. I have no idea what that is, um, and you don't either. So, you know, our, our take on this is we've made it as safe uh, environmentally friendly and biodegradable as possible. And one of the big benefits of that is that um, all of the precursor chemicals that go into this come from environmentally safe and biodegradable uh, feedstocks, right? So it's, it's a much cleaner supply chain to get the product into this bottle. But like all solvents, once you've used it, um, it is now contaminated with who knows what. And so it needs to be disposed of like other solvents are disposed of. So most cities have tox drop um, facilities or, or monthly or quarterly. Um, you know, at the, I think the one here we have is like at our recycle thing once a quarter, you can come and drop off uh, chemicals and then they dispose of it properly. And the beauty is, uh, you know, the, the biodegradable safe components that are in here will be dealt with properly. And then the stuff that's bad will also be dealt with properly. So uh, yeah, our statement on that is we've really done the best that we can um, in getting this to be as friendly as possible, but please treat it as if it's dirty, do the right thing with it, um, take it to the right place, and that will leave everybody happy. 
Probably the biggest benefit, I'll say it again, of going to the wax drivetrain is just how few solvents and chemicals you ultimately need. Uh, you know, you think of um, the multi-step cleaning processes that we had before are now one step, one ounce per chain. So we've really limited the volume of material uh, of solvent used per chain. Um, but then too, once you're on wax, you can now reset the chain with just boiling water. And so that is a lifetime of reduced solvent use. Um, and on top of that, the wax itself is quite uh, environmentally friendly. Ours is a mixture of paraffin and a number of, uh, of organic, uh, I would say, waxes that come from natural products um, in there. And so comes out, uh, again, onto a paper towel or something, can dispose of it. It's considered completely safe. Um, actually, all of the ingredients in the Silka Hot Wax are considered food safe. Um, but still dispose of them properly because they're gonna be covered in road grit and grime and all sorts of other uh, icky things like that. But that to me is the real environmental benefit of this is you can get to a place where potentially the entire life of your chain has only required one ounce uh, of solvent and one very friendly made from food ingredient uh, lubricants to run the life of that drivetrain, which according to zero friction cycling's data and other independent data sources, you can extend the life of the chain up to 10 times. So, you know, you're saving chains, you're saving drivetrains, you're saving money, and you're using way, way fewer solvents. Uh, last question. Because we say biodegradable and use words like food safe ingredients, people, I hope mostly jokingly, in the comments of these videos always say, can I eat it? Can I drink it? And the answer is, of course you cannot eat or drink it, you dumbass. I'm sorry. That's the stupidest question ever, which is why I'm really hoping that you're just joking. Um, no, we do use food safe ingredients, ingredients safe for, there's a whole NSF category of these, uh, you know, uh, safe for incidental contact with food products, safe for use in food machinery, safe, whatever. Um, the thing to think about, and again, it's back to like the biodegradability here, this stuff is mega concentrated so that it works. Um, mega concentrated stuff is not good inside your body. Eventually, if you dilute it far enough, it's fine. Um, but we're using it in its strongest possible form. So no dumbass, don't eat it, and don't drink it. On that note, uh, we're gonna end it here, but I know you have more questions and I'm sure you have more comments and I'm sure I'm gonna hear from a bunch of people who I just called dumbass. Leave your comments right here below. Be sure to hit like, be sure to hit share with the other dumbasses that you know. And uh, please keep the questions coming. They really help us, uh, help guide this content uh, to help understand the, you know, I've been living with this product for 18 months, uh, every aspect of testing and everything else. Um, it's hard for me to get myself into a spot of, of somebody who's learned about it for the first time. So please, we love your questions. We love answering them. Ask them below, and we'll make another one of these videos uh, to get them answered as soon as possible. Thanks again. Mm -hmm.